So here it is guys, the new tent that I used on my recent backpacking overnighter camping trip with some friends into the wilderness. Uh, I will have links to my actual adventure videos in the description box below. But this is what I used. It is the uh, newly designed REI Quarter Dome 3. I was testing it out. I got a three person because a two person is just too small for myself, my wife, and my dog. And I, we wanted to have a tent that all three of us could fit in. So we got the three person, even though it was just me and the dog in it for that trip. Uh, it's very simple to put together and set up. Uh, I didn't time myself, but it definitely didn't take me any longer than a few minutes to get this thing set up. Um, and one of the one of the things I like so much about it is all the mesh. And what that allows is, uh, while you're breathing at night, all that condensation and warm air from your breath while you're sleeping, it has a place to escape to, right? So that mitigates the issue of built up dew and humidity um, and moisture on the inside of your tent uh, throughout the night and in the morning when you wake up. So you don't wake up just getting soaked or dripped on by all the condensation from your breath throughout the night. Uh, that did happen to me, kind of, uh, when I went winter camping with my Hilleberg tent. Uh, the condensation built up on the walls because there's just not enough mesh in that tent to properly vent it. So the condensation from my breath and my dog's breath built up on the inside of the walls and then because it got so cold it just froze um, and I'll have a, a link, link below in the description also link to that video so you can see what it's like to, um, to actually wake up with the inside of your tent basically freezing over. Uh, the poles are really simple, this one simple hub design so it's all connected by that hub there and this hub down here so it's just all the poles are connected in some way so you just uh, interlock them and make sure that they are uh, laid out properly on top of your tent before you start putting them in the grommets to actually set the tent up and my amateur mistake when I tried to set this up the first time was at the hubs the hub up there in the top middle of the tent and this hub here they have a little knob if you can see right here I don't know if it's focusing very well but this little knob right here has to be facing towards the tent uh, same thing with the knobs on these elbow joints they need to be facing down towards the tent because you have these little connectors that slide onto those knobs uh, so if if they're not facing towards the tent, then you're not going to be able to uh, hook the tent body up to the pole structure, which was my rookie mistake when I first put this together in my living room before I actually went out to use it in the wilderness. That, that's another point. When you get a new tent, it might be a good idea to go ahead and set it up in the yard or in the house or wherever you're able to set it up just so you know what you're doing when you actually get out there. That way, if you get caught in a storm or something, um, you won't be fumbling around trying to figure out how to set this thing up when you actually need to get it up quick. You'll already know how to do it. So even even the second time I set this thing up, when I actually went out camping with it, I was able to get it up in just a few minutes. I got it up even faster uh, just now to set it up for this. Uh, it's quite sizable, the tent. There is lots and lots of room in there. Um, it is a freestanding tent, but uh, if you don't stake out the corners, which I have done, um, the, the floor won't quite be as roomy or as spacious because it'll kind of uh, crumple in on itself. So it's good to stake out the corners if at all possible because it's going to really maximize the room that you have on the floor in this tent. Uh, the stakes that are provided, they're not the best stakes in the world. They're just these little J hooks. Um, but they get the job done. You know, uh, I, didn't, I didn't stomp them into the ground. I would definitely advise against doing that or uh, stepping on them to actually plant them in the ground when you're using them. Instead, uh, I found myself a flat rock, so I just 
uh, placed the pet the stake where it needed to be and then I pressed it in with a rock so I wasn't hurting my hands um, but that will help prevent the stakes from bending on you uh, even though these aren't the best quality stakes they still just got the job done and I didn't have any issues with them um, no bending nothing like that even though I do plan on upgrading these stakes pro to probably a set of groundhogs MSR groundhogs or something like that uh, let's see there is a large door well not large door you can't really get in and out of the tent from it but there is this third door here at the head of the tent yeah I'd say this is the head of the tent um, big U shape and what this is for is this tent actually has three vestibule areas which is really cool it's got a vestibule where each door is on either side it comes out so this side and that side over there and a third one gets pulled out here and this big little opening this U opening here is used for if there's a third person you know say sleeping in the middle or something they can store their gear right out here in this vestibule area so they won't have to climb over the other two sleepers in the tent um, if they need something in the middle of the night sorry the little the little guard dog over here saw something so now she's doing her little sneeze bark <laughs> man eater I'm telling you man eater right there uh, this this U opening is also really nice if you want to get extra ventilation so you have all this mesh up high um, and if you wanted to you can kind of zip this open a little bit probably not that much I don't think I'd zip it open that much due to <laughs> bugs I actually had that issue I accidentally left one of the doors open unknowingly when I went to sleep out in the, out in the wilderness and uh, I woke up with a spider next to my head <laughs> oh yeah well, I that was nice. That was a nice wake-up call. But uh, you could you could leave just a little bit open like this, and that'll allow air to flow in through the bottom here, and then escape up through the top through the mesh, which will give you kind of a pseudo high-low ventilation, which will just help to move the air on through and also help prevent the uh, condensation, like I was talking about, building up. What do you want? What do you want? What? What? Arr. Little goof. Anyway, uh, so inside the tent, I'm gonna kick off my flip flops here for a second. Uh, in this, uh, inside the tent, there is tons of room. I can sit up. Uh, sit completely up in here with easily another head probably even shoulders and head above me there's tons of room makes it, making this tent very comfortable um, at the head or at the head end you stay out you stay out I don't need to clean up any more mess from you at the head end up high you have two mesh pockets and at the foot end there's one large one, or one large pocket uh, that spans the entire width of the tent. And I like these pockets because they're actually kind of tight. You know, they're not they're not really saggy. So whatever you put in there will be secured nice and uh, nice and taut against the roof of the tent. You don't really have to worry about it sagging down, and getting in your way. Uh, there's of course little pegs here so you can uh, like this like this U vent that I was talking about you can completely open it up and roll it up and secure it to those loops just like I have the door secured right now same thing goes for the door on the other side with those pegs there and overall I mean this tent is pretty lightweight you also have um, you also have loops in here there's one right there and one right over here. I'm pretty sure that those are, actually you got more than that. Oh. So you got four, you got four loops on the inside. You got one in these two corners and that corner. So it's making a triangle right there. And then another one up here. 
I'm pretty sure what those are for is you could, I hadn't really looked into this, but you could probably buy an extra little uh, gear loft that you can attach to those loops. Uh, personally, I've just used them to hang stuff. So, um, for instance, last night, uh, or not last night, uh, when I went camping that evening, I hung my LD22, my Phoenix LD22 flashlight from this loop uh, in the middle, in the top. I hung that with the uh, little lantern diffuser on it so I could illuminate the tent, uh, which was perfect. It, it just made my tent light up like a beacon at night, even though it was pitch dark. So, um, And when I'm sleeping, I go ahead and put the LD22 to the lowest setting, and it gives me just enough light if I were to turn it on uh, to get something if I woke up in the night. It gives me just enough light to actually see what's inside the tent, which is nice. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, it's very lightweight, it's very affordable, and it breathes very well. I had no condensation issues. It's got two doors and a third opening, three vestibule areas, a hubbed pole design, and plenty of mesh. I love it. That's pretty much my two cents. It's a great tip after using it once. Um, if any issues arise, uh, I'll be sure to let you guys know if you ask. I don't think I'll be doing another video on this tent unless something uh, really bad happens or something really serious goes on. Then I may go ahead and do a little update for you. But yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope this uh, was helpful. Uh, if you're thinking about or if you're on the edge of thinking about getting one of these REI quarter dome tents uh, personally I think it's worth it uh, they're they're really good tents they're taut lots of options I like it I give it a thumbs up till next time keep the faith stay safe stay vigilant Mad Max out